Psalm 23. I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymnist reminds us, All the way my Saviour leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercies, who through life has been my guide? In Exodus chapter 3, where we can recall the well, when Moses had an encounter in the presence of God with the burning bush, that God revealed God's self as the I am. God is present and incarnate in all circumstances. And some of the circumstances and ways in which God, God is incarnate is as a protector, provider, guide, deliverer, healer, comforter. I am who I am, says Yahweh. I am who I am is the very nature of who God is. God is not changed by circumstances. So even though circumstances and the world around us is always changing, God, on the other hand, is not changed by circumstances. Instead, God changes circumstances. Psalm 23 talks about the nature of God as a shepherd, the nature of God, who God is. So let us hear the first expression in Psalm 23, in verse 1. And it, this expression consists of three words. The Lord is. Simple put, the Lord is. And this is who is talking about who is God. The Lord is. The psalm captures personal experiences. And so the pronoun, the personal pronoun is always used, such as my. God is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before God's throne. The psalm, Psalm 23, could be viewed from two perspectives. And the first perspective is from believer's experience. And the second is from God's view. Let us look at Psalm 23 from God's perspective. From God's perspective, it is more a matter of assurance. I am who I am. This is revealing God's self as shepherd. Throughout the various seasons and phases of life, our shepherd, our good shepherd, has been our guide. The various seasons will not always be sunshine. But this one thing we do know is that we can stand on the promises of God, which is sure. In the storms of life, there is a rock which provides shelter. This is the rock of ages, the rock of ages which cleft for us. It provides a safe lodging, a hiding place in which we can shelter from the storms of life. So if we should look on the structure of the psalm, and in particular Psalm, uh, 
Psalm 23 and verse 1 in particular, the structure of the sentence emphasized that it is God and no one else who can offer security in the storms of life. It is God who offers this security. Because God is our shepherd, we shall lack nothing that we truly need. Even in times of crisis, God is providing for God's people and such crisis as the Corona 2019 pandemic. Further along, when we look back further down the road, when we look back, we can use the words of the psalmist all the way. My Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Further along, we can testify of God's goodness. So in verse 1, we could, we could look at verse 1 as being the thematic the thematic sentence or topical sentence of, of, of the psalm, of Psalm 23. Verse 1 is the theme of the psalm and the subsequent verses give breakdown on the way God is revealing God's self as shepherd. Now, there are four ways in which God revealed God's self as shepherd. And the first is that God revealed God's self as provider. God provides. And in this psalm, how does God provide? How do we see the provision of God? God's faithfulness comes out in how it says that God will, the shepherd will lead us, lead us in flourishing pastures, will lead us. In green pastures. This is talking about the prosperity of God, the provision of God. And secondly, God as comforter or God as peace. So in the psalm, it says that God will lead us beside quiet waters. God will lead us beside still waters. So God is our comforter. And thirdly, God protects. So in the psalm, we are reminded how even though we walk through the darkest valley, that we are assured of God's protection because the shepherd's rod and staff will comfort us and we need not fear any evil because God is with us. And we can say then that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And finally, fourth and finally, that God is healer. So we see this in how that God says uh, that the shepherd will anoint our head with oil. So the anointing is a commission and dedication for service. But here we could also see it as anointing, as a, a work of healing, that the olive oil is normally a, a contact point for healing. One central theme which we should not miss in Psalm 23 is God's grace. God is gracious. God's grace is God's unmerited favor. So even when we don't deserve it, God loves us. God loves us and as a matter of fact, we could say that God's favor is pursuing us. So it is not we who are pursuing God. And in some churches, especially Pentecostal churches, it is normally presented as that you should be working for your blessing, you should work for your blessing, and do things for your blessing. But no, we don't work for God's blessing. But, but instead, God's favor is pursuing God's people. God's favor is pursuing God's people. God's favor are run with them. God's blessing are run with them. Can you imagine that? It is that God is coming after us and God is desirous of having that reconciliation with God's people. God's favor is pursuing us. We, when we look in Psalm 23, can we 
realize and notice that nowhere did it specify who God will favor. Nowhere did God specify who God will favor. God will favor all people. So as is, is normally say in the in the country that God uh, favors, um, God reigns both on the just and on the unjust. God is not partial. God doesn't choose to favor some and maybe those who he doesn't like, he doesn't favor. God doesn't behave like humans. God doesn't uh, prosper some and those who we consider to be enemy. Um, God doesn't uh, favor them. But God prospers all persons. God favor God's people. For those who uh, is not prosperous, sometimes it is because they choose the path of destruction and their action become their end result of destruction. But God, God, God does not favor who uh, will uh, be prosperous, but God prospers and favor all persons. So what is this saying then? It is God who choose, chooses to favor. It is God who chooses to favor. And it is not us. We, we don't pray as some person pray, belaboring for God's uh, prosperity and favor. But it is God who chooses to favor God's people. So here is uh, the theme of grace, which is saying that God is impartial. In other words, God is not partial, but God favors all persons. What is the message to us and what is the charge then to us? The charge is this, that this grace which we have received is compelling us, it is urging us, to reach out to others. So the grace of God is of a missional nature that it is commissioning us to go into the world and to teach, baptize, to share the love of God with all persons. Let God's light shine through us to, so that others, even in a desert season, will come to realize that God is faithful. So then, we, we are still in the season when we are reflecting on uh, the resurrection of Jesus. And uh, my friends in Christ, the message for us is that we should live, we should live lives aware of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And lives live in awareness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is lives which is bearing witness to this resurrection, letting God's light shine through us to others in even in desert places or actually places which look and resemble desert places. So what we are saying here is that God is faithful, that even in times, even in places which appear and look like is desert, appear to be desert places, that God is providing, even in crisis, even in times of hardship, that God is faithful, that God is provider and is providing for God's people. When we watch the news, especially the international news, we see that um, the investment spaces such as the stock market, it is up higher than ever during times of hardship that God have ways of providing for God's people that uh, even America, for example, is now saying in the United States that some of the wealthiest persons were born during this time of financial hardship. So God is providing. If we look carefully, God is providing. So some persons, their wealth have been doubled and tripled 
God is providing. And so we just have to be creative and look closer. Take a closer look. God is faithful and that God is providing. And the psalm here in Psalm 23, Psalm 23 is saying that because the Lord is our shepherd, my shepherd, your shepherd, then we shall lack nothing that, that we truly need. What it means then for us is for us to trust God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. My friends, brothers and sisters, let us come to Christ. Let us trust God. Let us trust our shepherd. Trust and follow our shepherd by faith, by living the resurrection life, by living life fully aware, by living lives aware of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in so doing, our lives will be empowered and transformed by the Spirit of Almighty God. The peace of Christ be always with you. Amen.